Hi, I'm Daniel Fendrick, and I'm a bassoonist in the Ann Arbor Symphony. And I'm Liam Jackson. I'm an associate bassoonist with the Civic Orchestra of Chicago. And we're here with a special bassoon edition of Two Button Brass's Excerpt Challenge. Yes! yes! <laughs> We're really happy to be here today because we've both known Daniel Skibb a long time. I've met Daniel Skibb in 2001 and my life has never been the same. And I'm really excited since I got to participate in an excerpt challenge a few weeks ago to be on the other side of it and judge some of you after I was so harshly judged. The excerpt we're presenting today is the fourth movement of Berlioz's Symphonie Fantastique. And I want to know your opinions, Liam, because I've always thought it wasn't too hard on bassoon. It was one of those things I saw on a list and I'd be like, what's that doing there? Yeah, and a lot of bassoonists really want to take off and play it way too fast, and it's never played all that fast in context. Um, and so it, I think it's more just an exercise in playing the range of the instrument, making sure that you can play high notes and low notes cleanly, staccato, and having them all come out appropriately. It's a fun excerpt to play. The whole section, all four bassoons do it, uh, split two and two for some of the divisi parts, but it's very fun. And another challenge too is it's marked piano for most yeah. of it, and so a lot of people have a tendency to really crescendo in order to make some of the range issues a little sure. bit easier, and you really have to avoid doing that. You really want to keep it down for the, the most part until the big crescendo with the scale at the end. Yeah, that's true. When we were deciding what excerpt to pick for this challenge, we ran into this issue of a lot of bassoon excerpts are super bassoony, and things like the Rite of Spring, which is really hard on bassoon because of the range, is not going to be hard on pretty much any other instrument. And it, unless you ask maybe a Cam, the tuba player, to play it where we would be playing it, um, it wasn't really appropriate. And then the other excerpts we have, a lot of them are just super fast. Really fast. I mean, I would love to hear Alex play Marriage of Figaro on the trombone, but we're not sadists. <laughs> so, we thought this was a great test, and it'll be particularly interesting on brass instruments because you got to do the range, right? I guess we could talk about the movement a little bit. Yeah, and Berlioz's right. treatise on orchestration. Ugh. <laughs> so Berlioz, you guys know about Symphony Fantastique, was having an opium-induced frenzy, and that uh, is what most people remember about Symphony Fantastique from an audience perspective. The fourth movement specifically is when he dreams that he's walking up to a scaffold to get executed. So I, I guess this bassoon pitter-patter could be footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not really sure. Yeah, he uses four bassoons in uh, mostly two tier, at least in very similar lines throughout most of the piece, especially in the fourth and fifth movements. Um, almost always to depict some sort of savagery. Mm. Um, he, Which is fitting. I mean, right, exactly, yeah. right. In his treatise on orchestration, he talks a lot about how the bassoon sound is not particularly pleasant, especially the French bassoons that he was writing for at the time, and they're also not very loud, hence the use of four bassoons throughout most of it. Um, and so none of the excerpts from Symphony Fantastique are particularly uh, lyrical, beautiful, no. In fact, none of them are. Uh, of them it's are. it's all about playing in, in sort of aggressive way, and uh, that's also paired with the serpent and Ophiclide from oh, yeah. from a lot of it. So uh, it's none of it's pretty music, but it, you know you still have to be very technically. And proficient. if you get the chance to listen to a historical recording with the serpent and Ophiclide and these like really brassy bassoons, it's really it's worth it. Before we get into harshly criticizing the members of Two Button Brass's attempts at playing this excerpt, we're gonna play it for you ourselves. Hope, Hope you enjoy. enjoy. Perfect. That's good enough. <laughs> All right, so up first we have Alex on the trombone. Let's see how he does. Yeah, this is my first time wearing an AirPod, so this is exciting for me. <laughs> Howdy. Uh, thanks. Hi, for Alex. Sitting down, taking the time to do this little excerpt challenge with us. We really appreciate that. Um, you better. 
yeah, so I'm not we gonna, thought that I'm not talk too much trombone would probably have the easiest maybe, part. Maybe, uh, you know, skip playing with pedal Fs, but trombone should have a pretty easy time because of the range. Right. Yeah. Now, counting down from five. All right. Here we go. You ready? Mm-hmm. So, it's slower than we would play it, that's for sure. But so far, I mean, that's some good articulation. Mm -hmm. Very even. Ooh, nice. Not a problem. Nice. Finding some places to breathe, that's good. Yeah. It'll be interesting <laughs> to see if he keeps those. Got to have that huge breath to go down here. That's tricky, yeah. It's hard for us too. It's, yeah, well, it's, it's if you were just staying in that range, it wouldn't be so hard. Right. But having to jump. There we go. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so most of the excerpt we would want to hear really quiet so that the scale really pops out. Um, but you know, he's it wasn't loud. Right. I think it could be louder at the end. Maybe yeah, see if he really lets it rip tempo. in the performance. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, it, was a, it was probably more than half of the tempo. I've played it at this tempo. Yeah, it's the slow side of a realistic yeah. tempo. So the thing about the breaths is when you're playing in a section of four bassoons, right. no one's going to notice. But in an audition, right. you know, really want to make sure you cover those. And that's one of these things about it's so much easier to play in context, so much more fun. Yeah. I think the key here is going to be keeping it soft. Oh, really yeah. keep it soft. Yes. And also, yeah, we'll want to make sure that all the chromatic notes are in tune it's on like these. A bit. I, think I'm gonna... I think the first bit sounds yeah. great, up to the high B flat. It's, I think it all sounds good. Yeah. You can get loud. You, can, you know this part. Right. That's a trombone part. You can explode. <laughs> I feel like I just have to add. No, there is. So, yeah, I didn't, we didn't really take that consideration. Yeah, we can do most of it in one breath. Right, and the resistance is so different. There's a lot of places where the beaming is a little bit strange. Yes. And that, those might be better places to breathe, seeing if you can take one of the, the bars of four and break yeah. those up. Yeah, Berlioz has some very specific beaming throughout this that kind of impacts how you play it. Would you phrase a little bit with those beamings? Yeah, yeah. if you can make something out of it. So you've got the toughest time, Alex, out of anyone with the scale at the end, so. Yeah, if he can do all that in one breath, he'll be golden. Yeah. That's my five. Time's up. I really hope he lets loose on the scale at the end. <laughs> Just let him rip. All right. Mm -hmm. all right. He's happy to be there oh, once yeah. he gets to the end there. That's such a great tone at the end. I mean, that's really, that was intense. that's the trombone for sure. I think well, that's a really good illustration of what can happen to us in an audition, too. It's, sure. you know, you're trying to make sure that each note comes out perfectly, and then when you actually sit down to go to play it, all of a sudden you tighten up. Even on the first four notes, it can happen to anybody. I it can happen really to anyone. Interesting. And, you know, obviously we're more relaxed practicing at home than we are in any audition situation, so you're more likely to be able to get through long phrases, um, with no breathing problems if you're just chilling right. at home. Yeah, yeah. I think it'd be good in that five minutes to plan mm. some breaths, especially where we were talking about with the beaming, just to make yeah. sure that you can see those visually as you go to perform and we'll the see, whole thing. And we'll see, I think, with Cam, right? Like, right, yeah. A lot of breaths needed to get through that. <laughs> but overall, it was pretty good. I mean, it was a little slow, but very consistent tempo. And um, it was a nice poppiness to the articulation, and so, the things that we're, we would consider as the bassoonists, those those very important audition things, he did a pretty good job. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, I mean, I, I love Alex's sound. That's a, you know, what uh, I really enjoy listening to Two Button. You know, that's it's just a great sound. So really enjoyable to hear for sure. Yeah. So next up, we got Sven on trumpet. And um, I imagine it'll be a little trickier on trumpet with the range. So let's give it a shot. He's not here. <laughs> oh, hey, Sven. Right. Anyways, here goes my five minutes. Alexa, set a timer for five minutes. 
It's always good to have an assist. I love Alexa. Oh, he's going for it. He's going for it. <laughs> that's he's going for like that's a good tempo. That's, yeah. that's kind of the tempo we would do. Sounds like a good articulation already. Yeah, it really does. Oh, it doesn't right. go for a low yeah. either. <laughs> He's playing it safe. But we can understand that. It's a, it's a big range. Oh, nice. Great scale, yeah, very even. I was hoping you'd go for the pedals, though. I'd much rather hear the lows than the highs. Are they called pedals on trumpet? Probably not. Are they? I think they are. I think, it, I mean, it would be harder for me to have to come up with that than just to play what's on the page, so. Right, and still preserving the phrasing, the, the voice leading and stuff. Assuming this is a B-flat trumpet, right? He's going up to a high C. Right. It's high. Yeah. But he sounds good. Oh, he's, he's not our <laughs> fault. We didn't say you had to play that part. We stop at the B-flat sometimes. Right. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh. Uh. <laughs> wow. Yeah, plays, you can get so much louder through the scale, right? He's not really doing a lot of the dynamic... Uh, it doesn't sound very soft, so the scale doesn't sound very loud. Right. I mean, it sounds loud at the high part. I think it, it's really probably harder on brass instruments to do such this long articulated passage really softly. For us, it's like, oh, thank goodness. Yeah, and the range issues too. Yeah. So I always have to lengthen notes as I go towards the bottom of the instrument in order to make it sound similar and in order to get the articulation to sound at the very beginning. We have our tricks about playing low and, you know, on a, we have a double reed, right? The further back you go on the reed, the easier low notes go. So we're kind of moving our heads a little back and forth through this excerpt. Just a little forward when we get higher, a little back when we get low. But it, I mean, that's probably the most common mistake or I guess issue that bassoonists do have with this excerpt is the low notes not responding. Right. At, at that part. Yeah, I would kind of wish that the high notes are down a little bit more in that range that the lower notes are in. Articulation's consistent now. It's good. It's a little loud. It's a little loud. But it, overall, I mean, quite impressive. Yeah, yeah, the intonation on the lower note. It's interesting that both people have talked so far about the poppiness of articulation, right? Oh, there's the time. <laughs> well, before he starts here, um, no tongue stops on these right. notes, right? Like, they're not stopping the note with their tongue. A lot of bassoonists will tongue stop an excerpt like this to make it sound a little shorter. I don't prefer that at all. I don't all. prefer that. I think you also want to make sure that you play this really horizontally. I mean, it, it moves forward yeah. the entire time, and a lot of bassoonists I've heard get really stuck in the first note of every beat. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's like, no, that's not what it's about. And that's why he beams it differently, I think, at certain parts. Well done! <laughs> there you go! <laughs> yeah, that is... I mean, it was... Again, the rhythm was great, and articulation was pretty good. It's, I, I think we'd have to probably dock him a little bit on the octaves, because it's kind of what we were going for with this. But overall, I mean, I don't know, it's like it's very similar issues to Alex, mm -hmm. so the, which is not many, right? It's just a couple of notes cracking and getting the intonation in some of the intervals, but... And the, yeah, and the volume too. The the whole thing was louder than it needed to be. Yeah. But what I really appreciated was he really committed to that horizontal motion that we were just talking about when he went to play the whole thing. So yes. it's, it's really clear he had that musical image in his head. He knew what he wanted to do with mm -hmm. it. And even when some notes cracked, he, he continued on with that, which is, you know, exactly right. what we need to be doing. True. And good job, Sven. Absolutely. So next up, we have our good friend, Daniel Skib. We're really excited about this. Can't wait. So fair uh, disclosure, he did warn us about this, and that's always a good sign. Yes, yeah, <laughs> absolutely cannot wait. Here we go, let's get it started. All righty, so. Oh, you can tell, he's just lamenting the fact that it's us. I have a wonderful looking bassoon 
excerpt, which is a bit of a change for us. You're like, oh, horn, yeah. this should be no problem. But then you think maneuvering around the ranges. Right, exactly. Picking out the notes in those lower partials. That's some tough stuff. With, uh, hope and pray. We're hoping. Oh, here we go. Oh, no, that's, <laughs> that's always a good sign. <laughs> hope and pray. Should we pause and have I'm a moment of silence? No. I think smurring yeah. is smart. Yeah. We didn't see that from any other. No, we did. Players. Well, maybe on trouble and it's different. Lovely. I'm curious to see where he's gonna have to breathe in the, yeah. in the real version too. He's making these long stretches. He's got more resistance, at least, than Alex does. Right. Oh! Oh, perfect. Oh, what a juicy pedal F. That's what I was expecting from him. Absolutely. I wouldn't have great expected Great player. Just great. Okay. You can grow. He's not getting loud. No. But this is... Right, we're not... We're just testing some notes, I guess, at this point. <clears throat> Um, and where do you, you do? did! Uh, That's the kind of articulation when you speed it up could very much work. Absolutely. You can hear the ping in our headphones. That's crazy. It sounds great. <laughs> yes! Oh. Are you... I mean, so... I've grown up with Daniel, so I'm, I'm always thinking, like, how, how is he so good? You know, like, <laughs> I remember playing in 7th grade wind quintet with him, and I'm like, wow. Yes, this sounds great. Maybe a little bit more in the middle of the note as it gets in that middle range. But he's playing it pretty softly. Absolutely. We like that dynamic. But the big thing actually of this whole piece is as obnoxious dynamics as possible. Yeah, it's a, it's a so. theme throughout. Every single crescendo is like, it goes into nastiness. Nobody has a problem if you really yeah. overblow some. He's trying to sneak a breath there. That's tricky. Could work. Oh, so round. Mm-hmm. So this is like a very realistic tempo as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is exactly the tempo I feel like if I'm hearing it in my head. Mm -hmm. Maybe two clicks faster, but it doesn't need to go faster, that's for sure. Who would have thought the French horn player would struggle with the scale? <laughs> oh, wait. Everyone. Right. Uh oh. It's time. Here we go. He's ready. Nice. Okay, couple. So yes, there was a little bit of, what would you call it, um, one wrongness <laughs> at the end with those, some of those notes, but most of it was quite good. Well, and the same thing happened to Alex and we were just talking right. about, right? Like when you actually sit down to play it, it, you know, these things that you worked on don't always show up 100%, but it's right. committing to the, the forward motion of everything, it's great. Yeah, and it's much harder for, for brass players than us. We have fingerings for everything, right. so the chance of missing a note for us, very, very low, right? right. As long as you know what fingerings you're using. Like for the, for, players like French horn players to overshoot undershoot it it's crazy hard so absolutely you know getting down to the low F is every time amazing yeah. uh, you know right after that it gets, it gets a little treacherous I understand that but uh, you know he had sold it to us as being tragically bad so <laughs> it was definitely a far cry from that I'm pleasantly surprised yes. <laughs> And I guess there's only leaves Cam, right? That's right. Very excited to uh, pick a winner. Very yes. excited to hear Cam's attempt. Nice job, Skib. So lastly, we got Tuba. I'm very excited about this. I am too. I think that there's going to be a lot that is easier for Cam, but the breathing. I mean, I oh, can't imagine breathing. what his plan is going to be. Hey, what's up? Super excited. Hey, Cam. To Hi, Cam. Today. I am going to have to take that down. Uh, oh, he's taking it there. down. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, that's understandable. 
<laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't do it either if I was a tuba player. That's a second bassoon. Uh, yeah, it's the same thing as Sven did. Just the second bassoon thing to do. I have five minutes on my timer, starting now. <clears throat> So I love the articulation already. Yeah. Direction. It's getting a little long. That's getting long. Long. But it's, he's he's it's the very the beginning. Right. I had it and I lost it. <laughs> Oh, we should have given them the second bassoon part with the pedal oh, B flats. Because I've been criticized before to breathe right after the, the release B flat because the phrase continues, but the whole orchestra comes in then, right. so that breath is covered. I think that if Cam can keep it short like he was playing at the beginning, it'll make it easier for him. Like that, it keep it more compact. Yeah. He's playing softly though. I think he can get louder at the end. So I think these the phrasing is what, the the length of these notes. He's trying to do some very serious forward phrasing, which is good. But I don't think he needs to elongate like that. Right? Yeah, I don't think so either. I would have such a hard time reading music and trying to do octave yeah, displacements on the fly. Yes. <laughs> Just that thing, every note has a staccato mark on it, so right. even if that is part of your phrasing plan, it still has yeah. to be mostly staccato. Yeah. Give it to us. But, nice crescendo. Ah. Okay. <laughs> There's so much chromatic voice leading, too, that shows a lot of places to breathe also. Right, well, Bassoonists are really good, good at taking very fast breaths, so sometimes you don't even notice that they're doing it. I mean, in passages like this, we're doing that all the time. Stravinsky, right. Shostakovich, you got to do these extended passage breaths, sneak them in. Those are good sneak breaths. Absolutely. But tubas are used to that. Totally. They're always... And they're in good places, too. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. It's a. Uh, he's playing it pretty legato at the yeah. end. It's more of a march. I mean, it's the right. the brass fanfare. It is a march. Dum dum. Yes. But da 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 dum bum. Right. That's. A, I have no no issue if it's well, short. Yeah. You know, full enough to hear it. But. unfocused practicing for you there. <laughs> uh, yeah. Great tempo. Great phrasing. Articulation. Yep. The breaths are great. Wow. Can we get the, like, some growth here? Nice. Wow, for unfocused practice, that really did pay off. I'm impressed. Okay. I'm impressed. Yeah, well Not done. Bad. Tempo might have been a little quick, but it made the breathing a lot easier. So we'll no, see. tempo's this great. Right up. on. Yeah. Earning me points or losing me points. Yeah. Uh, I'm very curious. That's, yeah, I'm someone else said, I forget if it was Sven or Daniel, who said that uh, the quicker tempo could be a right. nice way to mitigate the breathing problem. Mm -hmm. I think it worked out for, for Cam here for sure. And it forces you to have the forward momentum that we talked yes. about also. So that's everyone. Now we got to pick a winner. So overall, I'm extremely impressed. I am too. That uh, I think we anticipated a lot more issues with the range. Um, Way more. You know, definitely the the octave displacements were wise choices by uh, Sven and Cam. And I also think that uh, I was a little bit surprised by the amount of breathing issues, just because that's not something right. we consider as much. And it was an issue for for all four of them, even though they managed it. And so it really well. makes me think. Have I just not been paying attention to my own breathing in that excerpt? And then, do I really do the whole thing one breath? Look at Cam, he was taking breaths all over the place. It didn't seem to slow him down at all. I wonder too, if Alex were able to play it more up to tempo, if he would have been able yeah. to manage some of those breaths yeah, a little true. bit easier. But overall, I mean, you really navigated all of these tricky things about this excerpt really well. And I, I love that everyone was really focused on bassoon articulation. And I yeah. think that speaks well of the instrument and what they know about bassoon is good. Yeah, and we, we want to make sure that we can show direction without lengthening the yes. notes, except for as where we have to our bassoon trick to lengthen sure. the notes. And I mean, everyone really, the articulation was great all around. Yeah, I think really Skib really 
might have had the edge on the articulation overall. Really nice. And I actually, uh, contrary to what we might have thought at the beginning, Skib's pedal Fs were, I think, even more centered than Cam's low B oh, flats. I, I just, those they're flats. so resonant. That, I mean, I wish I could sound like that when yeah, I play this excerpt. That's right. But we do have to pick a winner. We do. We do. And uh, we've decided, all things considered, that the winner is... Cam! Well done, Cam. I think that listening to that uh, version of the excerpt was the closest to the way that we would play it. Yeah. Um, you know, of, of course the timbre is different, but I, I heard a lot of bassoon in that approach and I was I was fairly impressed by yeah, that. Yeah, me too. Great job, Cam. But great job to everyone, really. So that was really fun. And we got to thank our, our friend Daniel Skib and everyone at Two Button Brass for having us. I had a great time. Me too, yeah. What a great opportunity. And I love the uh, the connection it creates to try and ask different instruments yeah. to, to approach these Absolutely. challenges. It's really impressive. Absolutely. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I was forced to say that. Stay tuned for more Two Button Brass videos because we think they're great, and I think you'll think they're great too. Absolutely, and I hope that you are uh, put in trial by fire in an excerpt challenge soon. <laughs> Thanks so much for having us. We had a great time, and uh, we hope to see you soon. Yeah, I don't know if this is the sign-off, so thanks so much for having us, but probably not the sign-off. <laughs>